was going to be working on um, a smaller canvas, but I didn't have the canvas I thought I was going to have. So we're going to just make do and make this work on this canvas. And I'm trying to line her up and I will make adjustments as needed. I'm going to go ahead and tape it down so I don't get confused. Thank you guys for the sprinkles. I'm going to go ahead and just tape this tracer to my canvas. I sketched out, I sat down with my watercolors and I sketched out five or six different like fun fall things for us to do in the next few weeks. So I'm super excited to do those. It's so much fun when you can um, just sketch them out and color them as you go. It really makes, it, brings it to life and makes it a little more fun to do instead of just flying by the seat of your pants. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna um, paint on our sunflower. We're gonna uh, write in the word faith. So you can kind of see that now coming off the sunflower. We'll add a little clear glass to the bottom and in our sunflower head, we are going to add check glass seed beads to the center of our sunflower with a little glue. Then we're gonna resin all over the whole thing. Thank you, Angela. Faith is a great word, isn't it? So thank you. That's okay, Janie, I appreciate you trying. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sketch this. I'm gonna sketch the whole thing. And let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna start with, I'm gonna start here at this little loop-de-loop -loop, and then we'll check it as we go and make sure all the things are traced on. So I'm just gonna follow my sketch line and we'll trace on our petals. And I think what we're gonna do as well, after we get the flower traced, we're going to put on a background and we'll paint our background around the flower. And then we'll come back and add faith Let's just get our flower on, then we'll add some color because I kind of want to do something in turquoisey because I love a sunflower on a turquoise background. And you'll see from all my sketches I've been doing in the last couple days, you'll see exactly how much I love a turquoise background for fall because I actually uh, created several little pieces that um, I'm going to bring this down a little create several little pieces that are fall that I want to have a turquoise background for I just can't help myself just love that color so let's add in our little petal leaves and then I'm going to leave the faith off until we do our background that way I don't I'm not wasting my time yeah, yes, uh, sis, you can, as long as you glue them down really well. What I would do, if you're not gonna do resin, is I would put glue on your canvas, wherever you're gonna be. Oh, I need to kind of trace that in. Wherever your seed beads are gonna be, I would put glue on my canvas, then I would put the seed beads down, let it dry, then actually put a little more glue on top, just with a paintbrush, and then, let me pull this off and then um, let that dry. So yeah, you don't not necessarily have to have resin with seed beads. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of my favorite turquoise colors. Oh, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? All right, which is, it is called Desert Turquoise and I'm gonna grab some white. My bottle of white is trying to run away. And I'm just gonna fill in around my sunflower. So just give us a little grace. It's gonna take a minute. I don't wanna get all up in 
mess up my sunflower. I love sunflower, Sherry. You know, I was trying to decide this morning what I was going to do today, and I had sketched out a bunch of pumpkins, and I'd sketched out a couple of different sunflowers combinations, and ugh, I actually kind of wanted to do something not fall, but I figured this is borderline, so we could get away with it, because I'm just trying to... <laughs> I don't know what my hesitation is because I do love to paint the things that are for fall. So I don't know why I just need to get over it. Uh, you only uh, are provided a tracer if you are a member of the Shattered Circle. That is a benefit of being a member. So that's how that works. They are super, they're always super popular, aren't they? Okay, so I'm gonna start with my white and I've got about a quarter inch flat brush here and I am going to work around my sunflower with a little bit of this white. And I'm just going right around the edges. Then I'm going to add some blue in. I like to do the white first so it's not a stark blue. So it does it because these canvases are from Michaels, these 8x10. Uh, Three quarter inch canvases are super grabby and they like to grab the paints and not let go. And I don't want it to be really dark. So I'm gonna bring that out a little. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of that blue right on top of my white so I have a nice muted color and I can kind of control how much color is actually on my I'm having a problem too Lisa thank you Barbara so I'm going to go into my desert turquoise and I'm going to kind of do the same thing I'm just going to take it and bring, bring it around my flowers and then we'll blend that out however is needed just like it to be as abstract as possible. You're not trying to do any one particular look. So you want to work fast though while that white is still wet. And just bring around where you added the white into bring that blue into it. And then we'll bring it down around the rest of the canvas. Okay, I need a little more blue. This is a great color. And with the yellows from the sunflower, it really super awesome. Hi everybody. All right, so I'm just going to bring that down a little. Now I'm going to go back into my white. I'm going to do another little section. I'm just going to start here and just add some of that white. I got a little blue still on my brush, but that's okay. We don't worry about that. Just get in between those petals. Sometimes it's easier to just paint your background first, but the yellow is hard to cover the blue. It's hard to cover the blue with uh, the pale yellows that I'm going to be using for the sunflower. So we're doing it this way. So let's bring that white out a little. I'm actually going to bring it all the way to the edge of this corner since it's so close anyway. Bring it up. Now I'm going to go into my blue. I'm just going to repeat what I just did. All right, I'm going to go around my petals exactly where I traced them on where I just put white. Did you guys see the art piece I bought yesterday with the flowers and the little vase? So I never heard of this artist before and I love I'm going to buy art. I like to buy art from somebody I know or somebody local who I love. And I never heard of this person, T Terry Booker. And I bought a piece of her art yesterday. And I went back today. Don't laugh. I went back today and bought three more pieces because I loved it so much. 
but I bought it for some gifts for friends and I'm super pumped about it. They are lovely flower pieces. So we'll blend that out and I'm not gonna worry too much about what's dark or light. I just wanna bring that color to the edge and I'll leave that uh, variety of color here and there. All right, we're gonna do this last section and then we're gonna bring all that color out to the rest of us. Uh, I posted it yesterday, Christine, if you're talking about the picture. Uh, what I, what I um, bought today is at my house, so I don't have it with me. And they're also wrapped, because they're gifts. So, I'll be able to show them to you in about a month. But I posted some pictures of her art yesterday on the Art Shattered page. Lovely, lovely art pieces. All right, so I'm trying to figure out my flower, so I need to come in here. Come around. All right, I'm gonna grab some of that white and extend this white into my background. When I do the bigger area, I'm gonna get myself a bigger brush. Okay, we're gonna go into that turquoise again, and we are going to bring it in to this little gapper. Grab it up, ooh, look, mm -mm. <laughs> Thank you for the sprinkles, ladies. So I'm just gonna go around my petals again. Blend it out a little. Just dip and brush. I'm just gonna dip and just blend, make little X's or O's or whatever. Just kind of blend it out over the top of that white. All right, so my whole flower is surrounded now. So now I'm gonna grab a bigger brush because if I don't, this is gonna take so much time. All right. So I'm gonna grab up my white and just bring that around. I'm gonna to have to have more. I don't think I have quite enough on my plates. And that was icky. I've had some Little nasties in it. So I'm just gonna grab my white and add a little to my plate or to my canvas. It'll go faster this way. I'm gonna do a little on the sides. Since we're doing this blue, I want it to blend nicely, so we'll add to the sides and notice how kind of messy this is being. And that's okay, we are not trying to, this is like a really abstract background we're not trying for perfection. Okay, so now that this is all painted white, we'll offload some of that. I'm gonna go back into my blue again and just start adding that blue back in. Don't forget your sides while you have that white wet. White wet. Just kind of messy. The way I like it. I need some more of this. Thank you for the stars. So we're gonna just come in, and I'm just kind of making little cross hatches to 
is X's. Love this color. It's definitely a Cindy color. And we don't want you in there. This is going to be gifted to someone, and they do not want that. So this is my favorite kind of background, and that is just slosh it on, right? No wrong way to slosh. Sometimes when you aren't trying, it looks better than if you're trying to, if you're over trying. So I'll show you my edges in just a second so you can see kind of how they're messy too. All right, see how the edges are just kind of messy as well. Just uh, get some color on there. Now I'm gonna actually go into a little bit of white and tone some of this down where it's really super crazy. But I'm not gonna try too hard because I do like it to just be what it is. So we're gonna let that be and we'll pick that out though, whatever it is. Voila, we're gonna dry this. Grab where? Oh my gosh! Hang on, y'all. Somebody stole my dryer. Gotta find my dryer. Where is? Holy moly, y'all! Give me a second. I am. Huh. My heat gun is not where it should be. Let me find it. Oh. Well, that's not cool. Hello, hello, hello. We might have to fan dry. What in the world? Oh, found it. Found it. It's my old one, not where it was supposed to be. So let's get this dry. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Isn't that great? We're going to get this dry. I know, right, Charlene? It's like, what have you done? Where is it? I say that all the time. And you know what? When you're in the middle of moving, and, right, I did brag on it too much. When you're in the middle of the of moving, oh, look, it does. And everything, you got a lot of stuff still in boxes. And you, you remember, oh, where's that X, Y, Z? And then it's like, somebody stole it. Somebody stole my towel. No, they're just in a box. You haven't unpacked yet, you crazy person. Because I've been doing that, too. It's like, I can't find anything. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna line this back up on my canvas, right where I can see I traced that flower. I'm gonna tape it back down, and now we're gonna trace the word faith so that we can paint that as well. Now you can tell my canvas was still a little warm because my tracer wants to curl up. So let's get this. I'm gonna very lightly hold this down and I'm gonna trace my word faith as lightly as I can so I'm not pressing my hand down into my canvas too much, making marks. just going to trace the word faith. All the way to 
to the bottom. All right, voila. Now we have that on. <laughs> oh, organizing is like, if I start organizing, I will never find anything. Right now, it's a chaotic mess, but it is my mess and I know where all the things are. Oh, Lisa, just give yourself time and grace because I struggle with that as well, but I find that if I take my time and go really slow, that it does work better for me, even if you have to rest for a few minutes, because my hands are shaky. I have arthritis in my hands. They are a little shaky, and so um, I do struggle with that. So the first thing I'm gonna paint is, and I, put, I set my, tracer in front of me so I could remember what was what because when it's just like this it's hard to remember what is a petal and what is a leaf but I have this bright green kind of an apple green color and I'm going to stick some of that on my plate and I'm going to look at my tracer and uh, paint just one coat of color on those leaves so I'm going to grab a round brush which is really great for that kind of stuff. <laughs> I can't explain to anybody. I'm glad you're here, Pam. So I'm just gonna go into my apple green color and paint in my leaves and my, the uh, green parts of my sunflower. So there's that. And then this is a little leafy thingy here. So this whole section, this little blob, and this little blob, this is that bottom section of that sunflower head, we'll do this. And there's one little leaf sticking out to the side right there. We'll get him started. Then we'll paint in the first coat. Oh, and I'm gonna bring this down just a little, but that's gonna be black, but we're gonna bring it down just a little. All right. Yes, Charlotte, you can. Oh, y'all, my handwriting is terrible. So next, I'm gonna start with a uh, basic yellow color for my sunflowers. And I'm actually gonna start with this color. It's a bright, uh, really uh, nice yellow. It's called Crocus. And it is a uh, Delta color. All these come from Hobby Lobby. Every one of these paints in my repertoire have come from Hobby Lobby. So now I'm just gonna put uh, yellow, this yellow color, and it's gonna be really a thin coat of paint, so I'll still be able to see my um, tracer lines. So I'm just gonna get a coat of this yellow on. Then we'll come back and add the details to the petals and the leaves, and then we'll add in our faith sign. And we're gonna do something seriously fun with the center of our sunflower. So basically, it's just, this part is just like coloring in a coloring book. You are just filling in between the lines. Okay. Thank you, Phyllis. So 
at this point, you're just, like I said, I'm trying to avoid that center and coloring in. And you shouldn't worry too much about how this looks. It's never gonna be, look perfect at this point because you're really just adding that first bit of color. I'm getting on my own nerves with this stuff. I got too much stuff on my table. It's been kind of a crazy day and I got too much going on at one time. All right. Fill in. This looks good on blue, doesn't it? Love painting sunflowers and pumpkins. This is my favorite time of painting year. I'm a summer girl, so I do love the summer. I love going to the beach. I love hanging out at the pool. I love basking in the sun. Probably shouldn't at my age, but I do. I can't help it. I love it, but um, for painting specifically, this is my favorite time of the year. I do love painting the sunflowers and it does, doesn't it, Becky? The sunflowers and the um, pumpkins. I've got to get these nails done tomorrow or I'm gonna be in trouble because they are a hot mess right now. They're terrible. Turn my canvas and get this bent backwards little petal. Now I'm gonna hit this for 10 seconds with my heat gun again. And then we'll start adding in some details so you can really start seeing. Deborah, there's always gonna be a pattern for shattered circle menders. Always, always, every time. Let me dry this. Shouldn't take but a sec. Exactly, you do have to trust the process. There's always, there's always somewhat of an ugly stage before it's pretty. And if you're force drying like I am right now, Mickey, I buy my brushes uh, at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I don't use fancy brushes unless somebody gifts them to me because I'm terrible on my brushes. So I just buy inexpensive ones so that when I ruin them, I don't, uh, I'm not sad, okay? So you wanna make sure if you're blow drying that to dry it, to wait till it's cooled off before you start painting again. All right, so I'm gonna work on my sunflowers again. So I still have that yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, marigold, I think. This feels like it might be dried up. I really need to do, to do an inventory. Nope, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna also add a tiny amount of this toasted terracotta. Just a teeny, just a tensy. All right, so now we're gonna work on making our flowers kind of pop, okay? So I'm gonna still use my crocus yellow. So what I'm gonna do is just start, well, I messed that up, that's okay. I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna go right back over that petal and while it's still wet, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that marigold right onto my brush, which is that darker, I don't guess you can see, let me scooty over. It's a darker kind of an antique gold look and I'm gonna hit one side. Oh, I need some white, don't I? I'm gonna hit one side of that petal. Well, it's kind of try to keep you where I can, keep it where I, you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna grab up a tiny bit of white and 
hit the opposite side just with a smidge of that white. All right, and we're gonna do every petal this way. I'm gonna just offload, I'm not rinsing. Going back into my first yellow and just covering it again. Going into the darker yellow, hitting that opposite side, the far side with that gold, and then a little bit of white on your brush. Because this is still wet, the white just blends in with the original yellow, and then you end up having blended colors. All right, so let's do the original yellow. This is a little tiny background piece. I'll pick up a little bit of that marigold. Basically, you're using the same three colors and you're repeating the process for every petal. So just pull in some of that gold, wipe it off, grab it a little bit of white, Come over to the opposite side and just blend that in. We're just gonna keep this up for all of our petals and I'm gonna try to work a little faster. And I can still see my tracer lines, so it makes it really easy to keep up. That's a thicky. that's really thick, that marigold color. So come over on one side, add the orangey color, grab up a tiny bit of white, pop it on this side, and you can see it start to come to life. Can you tell? It's starting to kind of pop. All right, we're just gonna repeat for each petal. And every few petals, I'll raise it up so you can see how, what a difference this technique makes. So on the right side of the petal, I'm bringing in apparently a big old paint bugs. Let me get that off. Yuck. Bring in that orangey gold. It's called marigold. I'm gonna wipe it off onto my napkin. Just wiping it off, grabbing up a little bit of white and coming on the opposite side and adding that white in. Actually missed a spot here. So I'm gonna bring that orange in there. All right, so we're just gonna keep on keeping on. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is a little bit of a bigger petal. And marigold. On the right side of the petal, all the way down. Wipe it off. A little bit of white on the left side. Make sure it's all blended. And there is how we're working starting to kind of pop. All right, let me take a peek. Going back into the crocus. And I don't know, I lost my line on this one, so I'm just gonna make it up. We'll get the, the goods. Marigold color has got some funk in it. It's got some funk. That was a little too much, but that's okay. We're gonna get a little bit of white. We'll hit the side and make it all all right. This is just a little baby bit. 
baby bit of marigold, little baby bit of white. So does it make sense what I'm doing? I just am doing the same technique on every flower, but because I'm working wet on wet, I want all my colors wet when I, each color wet when I apply the next color. I'm doing a petal at a time. I could actually do two. Because I don't want the bottom coats to dry. Before I add my next color. It just looks more realistic to me. We're going to come back to when this is done, we're going to add one more little bit of fun color. I'm just going to turn this as I go. Oh, that would be awesome. A series of sunflowers. Y'all know I can do it. Y'all know I'm all about it. I don't know how many of you were here last year, but do you remember last year? when I kind of went on this pumpkin craze and I did like 20 pumpkins in like three weeks. I just did pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin. It was so much fun. I was actually looking at those today. And it was so much fun doing that. Thank you, Catherine. So a little bit of white. White. All right, we're almost there, guys. Yes, we did so many fun pumpkins. We did every, oops, I got the wrong color. We did about every kind of pumpkin you could dream up, and I was looking at them all today, thinking, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do this year? I did every color pumpkin under the sun. So we gotta figure out how to mix it up this year. I think we'll figure it out. Thank you for the stars, Cheryl. So there's my dark color. We'll grab a little white on this side. Ooh. I need a little bit more of this yellow. I'm so glad you can make a pumpkin now tie-dye pumpkin. That would be kind of cool. All right, so I'll do this little bit here. Back into the orange. Into the whites. Then we have this little folded inward Piece. I'm actually going to do the opposite because it'll stand out better. I'm going to take my orange right on that side, grab up a little bit of white to come this way, and the last one. I'm going to turn it back the way it's supposed to. I'm going to get my marigold. It's all clumpy. And we're going to go the opposite way. Grab a little bit of white this way. And look at that. That looks really good. I'm very pleased with that. What do you guys think? Give me some thumbs up if you like it. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna get a smaller brush, just a little liner. I'm gonna wet that. And I'm gonna get a little bit of this uh, terracotta color. Isn't it cute? Just a tiny bit on my brush. I'm gonna mix in some water so it's kind of runny. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that 
terracotta. And if you get, if you're doing this and it is too much, I can tell that on some of these it's gonna to be too much. I'll show you how I'm gonna fix it. It's a little out there. So I'm gonna take that same brush, rinse it off, go back into your, orig your original yellow and just hit right next to or almost on top of it to help push it back a little. So you can still see that line, but it's not so in your face. That's what happens when you don't work wet on lip. It just grabs Look at that. So cute. Thank you, Nora. It's very sweet to say. So now I'm going to take my brush, that round one that I've been using. I can found it. And I'm going to put a little bit of this brown, which is burnt umber, in the center of my, <laughs> look at my hand, in the center of my sunflower just to give it a little background color. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of blue too. First, I'm gonna get that umber and I'm just gonna spot it in because it's never gonna be like a perfect oval or a perfect circle. So I'm just kind of blobbing it in. Blah, blah, blob. I don't want it to look immaculate because then it doesn't look natural. All right, I'm gonna hit this with my blow dryer for one millisecond, or maybe three. I did buy it, Deborah, and I have not even looked at it yet. I haven't opened it. Everything's been crazy for me for, for the last, uh, few weeks since I got it, but I do have plans to actually open it. I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue that we used in the background and just pop it right on top of my brown. And you'll figure that, you'll know why as soon as we do the beads. But I'm just going to pop some of that right on top. So you can see what I did there. Can you see the blue at all? Can you tell I did any blue? Now we're going to finish up this green in the same manner. I'm going to go into my original green and then I have um, plantation pine that we're going to use as our shadow. And I'm going to throw a little bit more white out there. If you are in the shattered circle and you're looking for the bees, go to guides 14 and you will see the link for those bees. I don't remember off the top of my head the name of the Etsy shop. But if you remember, it is in guide 14. So I covered that with that original green. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of this dark green. I'm gonna pop it right along the bottom a little bit more. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and I'm gonna just pop that top with white and there your leaf starts to look dimensional. It starts to look like it's a really a leaf. All right, so back to the original green. Let's do this cutie. Grab up a little of the plantation pine, hit it right on the bottom. Poke a little white on your brush. Hit it right there, and we're just gonna keep going in that order. 
on these little buds on the underside of your sunflower. So we'll put a little bit of a dark green and poke it into the white and put the white on the opposite side. I'm making a mess on the side of this canvas. I'm gonna have to do a little touch up. So now, green, dark green. A little teeny bit of white. And original green. Just fill it in. The dark green. I'm going to put it on top. A little bit of white. Blend it in to your brush a little. And bring it to the bottom. And you want to bring those. That's a bigger one. So you want to bring those colors together. And one more little leafy. Thank you for posting that. All right, so we're going to do this last little bit of a leaf. Add a tiny bit of the darker green. Tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny bit of the white. And check her out so cute can you guys see that let me see if i can get it fixed right look how cute that is see how doing those details makes such a difference all right so now we need black so i'm going to add some black to my plate we're going to do the word faith in black Oh, hang on, my eyeball itches. And I think I'm gonna try to find a little bit of a smaller liner brush, hang on. This one's a little fat, a little fat. Not that small, maybe this one. Hang on, hang on. We may have to use this one. I don't really see one. That one's not smaller. I'm having a hot flash, so welcome to my crazy world. Ugh. So tired of these things. All right, I'm just gonna use this one. This is a six, number six points. Thank you, Brenda. Oh, I will outline it. I'm gonna do my faith first and then we'll come up while that's trying to dry, and we'll outline that. So I'm gonna get my black, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna, act, I'm gonna actually grab up a little bit of this dark green, and I'm gonna bring it down into the left side of that faith. And then while that's wet, I'm gonna go into my black, and just kind of blend right in so it's seamless. It goes right from that green to the black. And this is gonna take me a minute, y'all, so if you need to go get something to drink, something like that, go run, get you something, because I have been painting all day today and my hands are pretty um, shaky and cuckoo, so this might take me a minute because I'm going to have to go slow. All right, so I'm going to just come around and fill in my, where I traced it, where I traced on the word faith. And I got to hold my breath. Me singing that reminded me, I saw a post that a friend of mine posted recently where apparently she did something similar, maybe where she was just talking and then kind of broke out into song, like I often do. 
and somebody like jumped all up in her grill. <laughs> the foil pumpkin, pumpkin was great, wasn't it? Um, anyway, somebody got all up in her grill and said something really mean to her about singing. And I thought, law have mercy, don't come on my page. Because if you don't want to hear somebody break out and just talk song, you're not going to like it here. Because I do that all the time. Rima teases me about it. Can't help it if I'm a happy girl. So there's our A. Whew. I need a breath. <laughs> need a breath. And here's, let's get our I done. I have faith that I can do it. Do you guys have faith in me? <laughs> Sing it. I'm gonna dot my little I. Let's get our T done. I'm going slow, guys, because I got the shakies. So don't forget that we are gifting this art piece, if it turns out worth gifting. We're going to be gifting this art piece to someone in on this page who sprinkles the love and lets their friends know that we're here making fun art. So let your people know. Sprinkle the page. Let them know we're here having fun without them and that they need to join us. And then we come back here, let me know you did it. And then we're gonna draw a name from all of those wonderful people. And someone will receive this cute little sunflower faith. I think I'm actually going to blend. I'm going to wipe. I'm going to rinse off my brush. Thank you for the sprinkles, y'all. I'm going to grab a little bit of this dark green again. And down here where it meets the bottom, I think I'm going to add just a little bit of that green here and there. Just so it kind of looks like it might be part of the stem. That stem turned into faith. Voila. Okay. Now, look at there. That looks great. I have a little boo-boo on this side. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white paint, try to cover it up, and a tiny bit of that blue, and just kind of adjust. Because we don't want to send anybody a icky piece of art. Down here, too, where my hands got dirty and I was just touching everything. Let's make sure that looks nice. Oh, there's yellow. <laughs> I think we, I think we fixed it. Fixed it right up. They don't want to be embarrassed. All right, so now I'm gonna hit the word faith with my blow dryer really quick. Thank you, Lee. And so it's nice and dry, and then we're gonna do our little outline. Uh, RJ, I'm about to do that. Thank you, Christine. I'm about to do that now. I'm gonna use this marker. It's a graphic, it's Master's Touch which is a Hobby Lobby brand. So you could go into the art department at Hobby Lobby uh, where the, all the markers and stuff are. Um, I, maybe I took it down, Catherine, when she was being inundated, but uh, it's somewhere, we'll find it. 
Yeah, it's up. I think somebody posted it's up to my glass. And she may not have any right now, so let's just ask. Okay, Hobby Lobby Art Department. And um, Graphic is the name. It's a 0 0.5 needle drawing pen. It's like an illustrator marker. Somebody gave me this. This is not glass, it's plastic, and somebody gifted this to me. So I am now going to outline with our cute little marker. No, bee, no bees yet, Mary Ellen. So what I'm gonna do is take my marker, and I'm just going to short strokes outline my petals and I just do short quick strokes <laughs> and I'm not trying to be perfect let's make some dots and I'm not trying to outline it like um, you know perfect lines let's make some more dots I just want to get a little I'm gonna do it around the edge as well just a little scribble line. So you can kind of see the difference that makes when you outline it just really um, loosely with that pen. I love it too, Christy. This, the pen is my everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing with the leaves. Just loose strokes not trying to be perfect and I'm actually gonna come down and add a few strokes into our face. Cute. So here we go. What do you think, guys? This is so cute. I love it so much. Now it is time to do the fun stuff. Let me put these brushes back where they go before I get in trouble. Oh my goodness, Catherine. I don't understand that. My pens, my pens last forever. I probably had this pen, gosh, I don't know. Next time I get next time I get a new one, I'm gonna put the date on it so we can see how long it actually does last. So now I am going to grab some glue, and here's what I use. This is from Hobby Lobby as well. You could use any clear fast drying glue, but this is Aileen's clear tacky glue, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of this glue in the middle in the brown area where our beads are gonna go. And let me show you what I'm using. I love these beads, I love, especially for Christmas and fall. These are also from Hobby Lobby. It's a bead treasure pen, I mean, um, bead treasure brand. Um, check glass beads and the name of it is The Sea. And I'm not 100% sure, but these may be on sale at Hobby Lobby right now. If they're not, they are going to be very soon. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take out the great big ones, but I'm just going to use these beads right in my sunflower. So I'm gonna just pile them in and I'll shift them around as needed. Oops, I don't want that great big one or that great big one. There are some bigger beads in here. Let me get that out. That looks like a piece of wood. I just want the smaller ones and it's like a variety of colors. There's blue and brown and teal and green and all sorts of fun little colors in here. Now I want to stack them up really well I want a pile. I don't want it just to be one little layer of beads. I want it piled up pretty good. So I'm going to stick them in there. Pile them up. 
You can add more glue if you need to do that. I need a few more little babies. Just some little teeny babies. Okay. That's got glue on it. It won't go back in the tube. So I'm going to get some of these little baby ones and put them right on this edge. Just stick it in. This is a teeny, teeny, teeny little baby. Let's get that in. These, these long old fingernails are good for something. They are too long. I've got to get my nails done. They are ridiculous. I can't even type. I can't do anything with these nails. They're making me crazy. All right, I need one more little baby. This looks like the smallest one. We're going to put him right there. Get in there. All right, so I'm not going to move that too much because there's only glue on the bottom side of that. But as soon as we, yeah, these are Czech glass seed beads. The brand is Bead Treasures, and the name of the colorway is The Sea. So I am going to grab my little thingies and. I'm going to elevate that really carefully so that it doesn't spill my seed beads while they're sitting there. And I'm going to take some clear glass. I don't know what y'all are talking about. And I'm just going to add it along the bottom. You could use green if you wanted to. I'm just going to use clear. Just want all my color to show through, so I don't want to block any of that blue. But you do you, boo. Add a little bit of clear to the bottom so the sunflower's not just floating. Thank you, Catherine. I'm gonna move this canvas up in just a second. I see I'm out of range. So give me a second. So you can see what I'm doing. A little bit more, and this is clear. Add a few little nuggets here. And I don't like it to be perfect. I want it to be kind of random. And we're ready. We are ready. We are going to do, I'm thinking one ounce of resin is gonna be more than enough. I'm gonna mix one ounce, and I'll let you know in the end how much it actually took. So, let's move that right there. I'm gonna mark my cup, half ounce line, right here, and a half ounce line right here. And then we'll glove up and do our thing. Oh, Darby, that's why I don't sell my art in other places. The highest I've ever paid to a commission is uh, 25%. Actually, I paid 30% to for um, a show I did that was a um, fundraiser. But that's a lot. That's a lot, 40%. But I don't know. I don't really do my art to sell. <laughs> you know, I know that sounds crazy, but, and I do, I love selling my art when somebody wants to buy it. I'm very happy to sell my pieces. And I do have a studio where um, I uh, sell art, but I don't, if I don't sell any of it, I just give it away. I uh, enjoy that part of it. I just enjoy making it. So I don't know, that seems high to me. Excessive. See if you can barter with them. Not barter, but you know, um, get them to come down off that a little bit. I'm looking for a cup. I'm looking for a cup to mix in. <sighs> this will do. So I'm gonna pour my resin, a half an ounce of resin and a half an ounce of hardener. I give a lot of mine away too. I just, 
I just don't, I just enjoy that. So I'm gonna do a half an ounce of resin hardener, whatever this is. And this is probably too much, but that's okay too. I actually have something to resin, but this isn't gonna be enough for that piece anyway. So I'll have to mix more. And then this is, this is actually resin. The first one was a hardener. And... Whoa! Stop! Okay, so now I'm gonna take my other cup and I'm gonna dump my resin into this cup and we'll mix this up for three minutes. So anybody on here buy a kit, whether it was a um, hydrangea kit or a pumpkin and sunflower kit. We sold all of the sunflower and pumpkin kits, but we still have a couple of the hydrangea, blooming hydrangea kit. I think we have three. Um, so if anybody wants one, you can go to my store, artshatter.com. We're not read, we're not doing any more. We just would like to sell the ones we have left. Because we have another kit on the horizon. And we are so excited to be able to tell you about it, hopefully next week. Okay, so I've got my half ounce of resin and my half ounce of hardener in my little cup. And um, Catherine is going to time me while I stir this slowly and scrape the sides and the bottom of my cup as I stir slowly for three minutes. So if you have questions, let's have it. I'm here to answer it. Well, Sherry, you're almost in time for our I'm totally plugged in, promise. Looky here, I can prove it. It is plugged in, so I do not know why the sound went out. <laughs> I am innocent this time. I'm totally innocent, have no idea why that happened. Can y'all hear me now? Give me some hearts. No idea why that happened, it is totally plugged in. Give me some hearts. Cheryl says, Cindy, do you use a funnel when pouring from gallon jugs to smaller about? No, I don't. I am just super careful, but you could totally use a funnel. Just make sure you label them, one for hardener, one for resin, so you don't mix them up, okay? Yeah, thank you, I am back. I, I'm plugged up and I can prove it. Look at here, I'm totally plugged in. So I don't know why, I don't know why that happens. No idea. Uh, is there a trace of your pumpkin sunflower for members? There should be one in the guides. I don't need to plug in my phone. I don't know why that happened unless my phone, unless my charger came unplugged. Let me check that. It looks like it's plugged in. Oh. totally plugged in so I don't know give me an extra 10 seconds for walking away Leslie you make friends with that palette knife Lou
right, I think we're about ready. Catherine says time. Uh, Dina, tracers are for members only. We, that is a perk of being in our membership is getting the tracers. So if you're not a member, we'd love for you to join us when we open again. So you have the privilege of having these tracers. So this is mixed now. I gave it an extra few seconds because uh, I walked away to check my phone, but I'm gonna start with dribbling on our little seed bead area to make sure that's all nice and cut and covered. Now I'm gonna come down to the glass and I'm just gonna start on this right side and I'm gonna make sure all this glass is nice and covered. I really need a new iPad y'all because Every 10 seconds, the comments goes away, and I can't see anything anybody's saying. I, have, I don't know if you can see my hand touching my iPad screen every 10 seconds, but if you see my hand go like this constantly, it's because, yes, that would be, three would be awesome. Maybe I'll do that. Um, it's because my iPad, the comments keep going away, and I can't read what anybody says comments go away. Making me crazy. Now let's do this side. So this was one ounce total resin and I think it's going to be a perfect amount. going to use my finger to kind of run along that edge to make sure the resin comes all the way to the edge without coming over. Now I'm going to use the rest, which is not much, and I'm just going to dump it on the blank portion of my canvas, and then we'll use our hand to smear that around. cover all the blank spots. I like my entire canvas to be covered mostly. If I have a little skippy here and there, I try not to worry about it, especially if it's a little one, like a little cis mark or a little pinhole. I don't stress out about that stuff. So let's pull to the edge Make sure your sunflower is covered. I see a little spot right there. I think it's green, probably from my hand, a little spot right there, but it's too late to worry about that now. So whoever wins this, I apologize for the little handprint. Got a little bit of my DNA in there. Now I want to go around the edge with the tip of my finger. Just to make sure it's coming right up to that edge. See a little debris. All right. I'm going to take these gloves off. I'm kind of looking at it to make sure it's all covered. I don't see any holes. I'm going to take these off. I'm not sure, Eileen, how you set that up. Thank you for the stars, Robin. So now I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use my torch because my good heat gun is uh, at my house. So I'm gonna use my torch because it's a little bit stronger to pop these bubbles. I'll show you how to use the heat gun as well if you're new. So if you're don't want to use a torch, you can totally use a heat gun. That's what I was using to dry my paint as I went along. 
So you can just turn that on. Exactly not made by robots, made by human beings. And you can just use this, go across a couple of times to pop any of those air bubbles. Thank you, Kathy, for the stars. And we are done. I'm gonna look real quick. I'm gonna grab a toothpick. Thank you, Sheila, for the stars. They're so sweet. And I am going to make sure I see there's a little something here. I wanna make sure there's no debris. There is a little hand spot of green right there. Just barely can tell. We're gonna, nothing we can do about that now. So, it is what it is. Okay, I think we are golden. I think it looks good. I don't see any debris. I don't see any problems. I don't see any issues. Look how cute. Let's show this close up. Let me get that a little something there. Look at this, thank you. Look how cute this is. A little bit of clear on the bottom. Oh, Sherry, that's sweet. Look how cute, I love it. And look at the seed beads in the center. Can you see those? I'll post a really good up-close picture of that. Love it. 